Hi there, in this video I want to show you the two different types of menu systems that you'll find in Immerse, show you how to access them using your controllers, and also how to access them using your hands with hand tracking, and how to turn hand tracking on so you can use it inside of Immerse, and then a few tips and tricks with hand tracking in particular on how to make it useful and accurate and work well for you. So with that, let's jump right into Immerse. Okay, here we are inside Immersed. You can see I have my controllers in here. Like many VR apps, uh, you can see the controllers inside the application. You can see I'm in the Lakeview Lodge and I have three screens open at the moment. So like many other applications, you see laser pointers coming out of your controllers. This will allow you to select different things and pulling the trigger is the way to click, essentially make a selection. Now, in order, the first thing I want to show you is the quick menu. In the quick menu, the, there's two ways you can launch that menu. The first way is you notice on your controllers, you have these circular uh, little information panels that show you information about your battery life and the time and so forth. If you stare at them full on, you see they fill with color and then it pops up. So I'll, I'll do that again with the other controller just to show you. You angle it straight at yourself, stare at it, and it, then the quick menu pops up. This is the quick menu. Uh, the other way to launch the quick menu is to simply point at the circle and click. So that pops it right up. So that's a quick way. So the quick menu just has some useful features. As you can see, you can mute and unmute your microphone. You can show and hide your screens. You can pin and unpin all of your screens. You can enable full pass through. An amazing feature by the way there's a separate video on that or you can launch the main menu now you can see in the upper left hand corner here this menu is pinned which means as I move my head that menu is not going to move but if I unpin it it will follow me if I look down or left or right that menu follows my view around the other menu is the main menu which is this option right here if I tap on that it opens up the main menu I can close it on the upper right hand corner. Another way to do that is to use the left menu button on your left controller. So tapping that brings up that menu. And then also your two thumb joysticks, if you press them down, press either one of them down, it will uh, launch or hide that menu. So the main menu does not have a pinning thing like the quick menu, but the, the green bar at the top, or it might be a red bar for you, you can click and hold with the trigger. You can push and pull. You can move this menu around and then you can grab one of the handles and you can make it larger or smaller and so forth. So you can reposition that menu, get it right where you want it. And then once you're in here, what you have is on the left, you have different categories. Here's all kinds of settings about your computer. You go to my room to choose your different environment. The different environments that are available show right there. If you want to go to a public space to basically join other people in this space to work or, or socialize, you can join the public room there. You can go to your profile, uh, which will show you information about your avatar. This is how other people see you inside Immersed. And then there's a ton of settings here under all these different categories. There's also some help menus. Now along the bottom, these are just shortcuts. You can turn on or off your whiteboard or webcam. You can share keyboard settings and so forth. So that's the main menu. Uh, with the uh, controllers, if I'm done with them, I can just put them down. And if I sit there and look at them, they'll just go to sleep. There, they're gone. Now I can work in Immersed. And when I'm ready to use them again, I just pick them up and uh, they're active and I'm good to go. So now I will show you how to turn on hand tracking and do those same things with just your hands, not using the controllers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit my right menu button to bring up the Oculus menu and quit Immersed, and then I'll show you how to turn on your hand. Okay, here we are back to the main Oculus landing area. I'm gonna go to settings up here and then look for the hand controllers, hands and controllers setting. And there under hands, I'm gonna enable hand tracking. Also notice this auto switch between hands and controllers. You wanna leave that on because it's very useful. 
So with that, I'm gonna go back into Immersed now and show you what that looks like. Here I am back in Immersed and I'm going to take my controllers and if I just put them down and I wait a minute for them to go to sleep, since I had that auto switch, you notice now I see my hands. If I pick up the controllers again, now the controllers are active. So in that way, you can switch back and forth between hands and controllers. There we go. So with hand tracking, now my hands are active. I can tell that by a couple of ways. First of all, they're, co they're colored. In my case, the theme is green. They're, they're kind of a, a dark green color. And if I point my palms, you see those laser pointers just like the main controllers. You want to disable your hands unless you're using them. To do that, you point one or both of your hands at your face, and then you take your thumb and your ring finger and you touch them together. Now you see my hands are gray, and when I point my palms, I don't have the lasers anymore. That's the most important gesture because you do not want to accidentally do things with your, with, if your hands are active. So you wanna keep your hands turned off unless you're using them. Now, to get to the quick menu that I showed you before, again, you can look at your wrist and just stare at it and the menu pops up. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my finger. Your, your hands do not have to be enabled for this. I'm gonna pass it through the close button and that, that's the way you click or tap on a button is by just touching it with your finger, whether your hands are enabled or disabled. Uh, the other way to launch the quick menu is to look at that circle and touch it with your finger. So when I do that, it pops up the menu. And so, and then similarly, if I wanna pop up the main menu, I can tap that button and it brings up the main menu, or um, I can look at my left hand and tap and hold my thumb and index finger together and you get that little spinner and it launches the menu, just like that. So that's how you get to the menus. Now, if, if I wanna move this menu around, so, well, first of all, I can actually pass my finger through the menu to make the different selections. I can turn snap grin on and off and do different things by, by passing my finger through those options, which is why the menu is typically very close to you. If you don't like that or you wanna move it around, I'm gonna enable my hands and then grab the main menu bar, pinch with my index finger and thumb and then push it away from me maybe make it a little larger, but now I can't reach that menu. I'll turn my hands off. I can't reach that menu and, because it's too far away, but maybe this is the way I like it. So I enable my hands, use my later laser pointer, and then to click, I'll pinch my index finger and thumb. Bink. So that's how you make selections and click things with your hands. And you can actually do a click and hold. So if I, pinch my thumb and index finger, and then leave them pinched. Now I'm moving my screen around. I can bring it close and put it far away, and I can tilt it, whatever I wanna do. And then when, I'm, when I have it the way I like it, I can let go. So, and then pin that in place. So that's how you do things with your hands. Now, a couple tips. Just now, as I was using one hand, you, you saw that my left hand was down by my side or on my chest or behind my back, kind of out of the way, so the cameras were only focusing on one hand. That keeps you from accidentally doing things with one hand or the other inadvertently. Of course, you can use both hands on purpose. If you put them out in front, I can click to you know make this large or small, and I can move things around with both hands on purpose. But if you want to only use one hand, just kind of take your other hand to your chest. And then that way the cameras don't get confused and they know what you're trying to do. So the, the fact that the cameras um, see your hands means that you need to have good lighting in the room. If it's too dark, they can't see your hands. This, they, they won't work very well. If it's too bright, if you've got a big beam of sunlight coming in, not only could sunlight damage the cameras, but it, it won't get a very good hand tracking. So make sure you have decent lighting in the room in order to do hand tracking. Also, you don't wanna do things with your hands kind of down here by your chest or at your sides. 
you want to have your hands out in front of the cameras so the cameras can see them clearly. You want to have your fingers splayed, so big exaggerated motions, so the cameras and the system does not have a hard time identifying where your hands are. So I hope that was helpful to you. If you've been using Immerse for a while, that's old news and basic stuff. But if you're new to Immerse, hopefully you could see how interesting it is to use your hands, um, not necessarily use your controllers inside Immerse. It's just convenient because you can just lift your hands and do things and then put and then get right back to work. So it's really fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful day.